Welcome to Fantasy Victory Now on FantasyVictory.com. And, Charge, what can we expect in RG3's return against the Vikings? Yeah, you know, probably not a lot of running since he is recovering from a dislocated ankle and all. Plus, get this, RG3 hasn't scored a rushing touchdown since December of 2012. So that means you're going to have to rely on his arm for fantasy points, and that's kind of a shaky proposition, too. Going all the way back to week three of last year, He's averaging only 0.9 touchdown passes per game. And the Vikings defense has been pretty good. They're allowing the fourth fewest passing yards per game, just 228. How would it, speaking of quarterbacks, how would yeah. an inactive or injury limited Tony Romo fare this week? And how would he affect the rest of the Cowboys offense? Yeah, you know, if, if we got to go to Brandon Whedon, I'm not as optimistic. He looked just okay. Well, he looked all right in his limited work on Monday night. Probably better than all right. But. We know the book on Whedon. He's a weak-armed, mobile quarterback, and I, I don't have a lot of faith on him. I, I'll take my chances with a, an injured Tony Romo. But either way, the Cowboys were already a run-heavy team. They had more rushing attempts than any other team in the NFL. Here's where it gets a little hazy. Arizona's an elite run defense and a really bad pass defense. So you would assume then that there's going to be a, some passing anyway in this game, even if it's from Whedon and whether it's an injured Whedon or an injured Romo or Whedon, the passing game could have some success because the secondary there is just that bad. Uh, something we don't usually see from Sean Payton much, just a ground and pound game. Yeah, there. Rare. Mark Ingram exploded. Yeah. He's got the short week this week. Yeah. Can we see more of them against the Panthers, though? The matchup's so tempting. I think we do. You know, last week, Ingram nearly doubled the Saints' previous rushing yardage, best rushing yardage game of the season. But that's just not, as you mentioned, Sean Payton's MO in his seven year tenure. A running back has taken 24 or more handoffs just four times. One of them, last Sunday, Mark Ingram. The last time it happened, Mike Bell in mm -hmm. 2009. So there's part of me that just says, you know, he can't get that many carries again. But Ingram gave him 172 reasons to believe he should. And we don't have Pierre Thomas. Kyrie Robinson's a big question mark in this game. Don't know if he's going to be able to go. So this is a good opportunity against a team that's allowed the fifth most yards to opposing backs and allowed a touchdown to a back in every game but one this season. All right, Ronnie Hillman, mm -hmm. he's been great. But has Ronnie Hillman pounded enough nails into the coffin that Monte Ball is droppable? Yeah, it's, uh, I think we're pretty close to droppability status for Monte Ball. If you, um, if you were to, one of those people that needed to, a roster spot to pick up another running back like Lorenzo Taliaferro or Charles Sims or Jonas Gray, I wouldn't blame, blame you for dropping ball because, you know, Hillman's versatil versatility looks so good right now. He just looks like a better fit for this offense. Since starting, Hillman's averaging 124 yards per game. That is 50 better than Ball was getting. At best, Ball fits into his same role that he had last year when he comes back, I think, as a change of pace back for an effective starter. So, you know, I, I think, Mike, that means that ultimately we're looking at a guy that's going to do for you a lot what we saw last year when he comes back in money ball and frankly that wasn't a lot all right some answers to some of your burning questions and some answers to your matchup decisions can be found at fantasyvictory.com just check those rankings from paul charchian play the higher rank guy good luck <laughs>